we are in a, in a customer's GD, a 2007 Hawkeye, which he's been struggling to get this car running right for a long time. And when we took it over, there's a whole bunch of small issues that, that we had to address, which I'll go over. But let's focus on the tuning for a bit. Now we're in the closing stages of the tune. So this is tuned via AccuTech, and this is pretty much as complex as you're gonna get on the stock ECU. You've got speed density, we've got a rotated EFR763 turbo kit, uh, built block, uh, the works, just pump gas. Now the AccuTech supports uh, all this for, for this ECU and chassis, but tuning in the speed density with no math sensor on the car was, was always fun. It takes a little while, but, but when dialed in, it, it works uh, it works great you can see that you know the the thing about speed density and such modified cars it's you know does it start does it hold idle how how are these drivability aspects because these are much more difficult to tune in than than wide open throttle so as you can see the car starts a stock uh, which is great to see now in terms of power this car topped out on pump gas at about 350 just over 350 on our on our heartbreaker of a of a mustang dyno but if you can see across here we've got a really really wide a really really wide power curve and this is what the 7163 turbo does really well so it spools uh, to full boost just past 3500 rpm and and we're holding about 20 21 psi all the way to red line we're at the knock threshold for the fuel that we're using but in doing so you you get power basically all the way up to 7000 rpm and the turbo is a handful to control in terms of boost. I'll show you guys what we had to do. We had to run a dual port wastegate actuator. It's an internally gated turbo uh, to just get it to behave because when it first came in, boost would just jump up and then it would, it would uh, plummet due to back pressure down to 11 PSI. So even below spring pressure up top but we widen his power band he takes his car to the track he doesn't have to uh, he doesn't have to worry about uh, about coming in and out of boost now and uh, and it's making it's making good power certainly a lot more we picked up a lot of power versus what uh, what this car came in so let's go under the hood and i'll show you guys the turbo setup and we'll go over a little bit of of the twin port wastegate actuator which was actually a necessity uh, on this efr this is a really clean engine bay that, uh, that he has here, but one of the defining uh, aspects of this, of this build in particular, is the fact that he has this rotated turbo, this uh, 7163, and when the car came in, it had a normal turbo smart actuator for a one bar spring, 14 and a half PSI spring. What happens is that in this turbo, there's so much back pressure, it's a twin scroll, there's so much back pressure, is, it's that it pushes the wastegate flapper open, and even in a 100% wastegate duty cycle, it was dropping below spring pressure. So what we did is we used a three port solenoid and we gave the actuator twin ports. So we had to buy a different actuator, of course. But what that did is that we fed boost pressure to hold it shut and then we used the three port solenoid to adjust the pressure that would open it. And that gave us a lot more leverage over holding this thing shut and not allowing that back pressure to just swing the door open. The defining characteristics of EFR turbos is their internal wastegate and their efficiency of that wastegate. In this case, the wastegate was just very, very efficient and it was really, really challenging to, to be able to hold boost. So finally, he's able to hold boost to red line. We can even go above what we're running at 21 PSI. Uh, and this car, because of that wide power band that this turbocharger affords, you don't really see such a wide power band on these, uh, uh, on these motors and these cars and the turbos. It's, it's going to really be fun uh, both on the street and, uh, and on the track because it's going to be able to pull uh, out of corners even if you are at a lower RPM, which is interesting because this GD, the 2007 here, has much taller ratios than something like that, which is uh, 2004. So you can really notice that a pull in, in a 2004 on this dyno in fourth gear takes 10 seconds and it takes about 14 seconds on here so it's about 40 percent longer gear ratios so interesting build uh, i'm really happy that we could get this uh, this thing done right for for the customer and tuned right it took a lot of time but uh, he's picking it up surely and, and i'm excited to see how uh, uh, how he enjoys it so hopefully you guys enjoyed some insights here if got any questions or anything like that get in touch with us subscribe to our channel and we'll keep you guys updated on the builds on our builds and customer builds and uh, hopefully you enjoy until next time cheers